I'm not sure why I'm an alcoholic, but I am. Um, I'm very fortunate in the sense that um, I was able to quit because I ran out of money. If I had had more money, I probably would have drank myself to death. And by getting sober, I, I started out uh, taking meetings in the jails and did that for 12 years. Uh, and then I ran into my sponsor who insisted that I help this fellow who was trying to run the halfway house. And that was the beginning of Keystone Halls. The not-for-profit organization that we formed over 12 years ago, the concept is that we are trying to help uh, recovering alcoholics and addicts um, get back on their feet. And our concept has always been uh, that we would send them out uh, with some new skills or improved um, mechanisms of, of uh, mechanisms of one sort or another. We bought some houses from HUD, fixed them up, used our guys to fix them up, and uh, sold them, and, and that kept us afloat for, uh, afloat for a number of years. And recently, uh, we've uh, been approved by the Veterans Administration. We save all these pictures on the wall, these uh, PSO pictures, because we want them to see so many people that have made the mistake of thinking that they could go back to their old ways just a little bit. And of course, we have uh, also the good wall, where the people that have, that have done well. And that's, those are the pictures that we're very proud of. We've, we've got uh, some wonderful people uh, that have come through here and have done well. I uh, have 19 years of Catholic education. The nuns and, and the brothers didn't take any nonsense. The people that are clients don't have any money. They come in broke. When they move out, they need to be able to take care of themselves. And if they don't know how to cook or the or are faced with the idea that sooner or later the sink is going to fill up with dishes if they don't learn how to take care of them, um, they um, will. They need that that type of structure, that that type of training. Well, Pompey is uh, is one of the uh, relatively new people here. Uh, and I would say he's really typical of a lot of our uh, new veteran clients. People that have uh, been in the service, 20 years have gone by and they really haven't done too much. And now all of a sudden, at, at the age of 45 or 50, uh, they're without. Uh, and they need, the, they need a fresh start. And we're happy to give them that. If it wasn't for Ron, a lot of us guys would, and girls would be living under a bridge somewhere. Nowhere else to go. The driving force in my life is seeing some of these people do well. It's amazing. It, it, it's a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful feeling. I think if, if more people would get involved with the homeless and struggling in our community, they would find that they not only help the people that they're trying to help, but they also help themselves. It's very, very satisfying to try to help people and see them grow. We were able to find a niche that no one else was filling. My background is this business. I did that for many, many years, but when my husband died in 1998, uh, I began to lose interest in the business and decided I wanted to go into something that would actually help people. We've helped a lot of plumbers, electricians, welders, you name it, and I think we've helped them. We've helped all kinds of guys uh, and women too. Most of them, but not all of them, come from the homeless shelters, halfway houses, churches and such organizations. And we always ask the case managers to refer to us only those people who are truly trying. We never actually give the clients money. Someone from Second Chance will go with them and actually uh, pay for the things that are purchased. We call it the Hand Up Program. We're not a handout, but a Hand Up Program. Boss says, come to work Monday, bring your tools. We try to provide those tools. Many times it's a uniform. It could be many, many different things, but uh, we try to help them get back after they actually find a job. The Hand Up program uh, helps with education. We've helped a lot go through security school uh, because security jobs, especially since 9-11, are fairly numerous. 
Uh, we've also sent a lot to CDL school. And taxi cabs, they must have a CDL license. We try to follow up on our clients. When we first started this procedure, I was very concerned because I felt that they might resent us prying in to their affairs and asking them how they were doing. But much to my surprise, they were very, very happy. You did? Well, good. I'm glad. And did that help you get a job? Oh, well, good for you. You're on your own apartment. Okay, I'm so glad. Henry came to us back in uh, 2008, and we helped him uh, finance his GED. Secondly, he wanted to go to McFadder Technical Center and take a culinary course. We provided him with the books and supplies necessary for this course. I'm very grateful that you provide me with the opportunity to make something out of my life, and uh, I never thought I'd be this far. But thank God that I am, and thank God that you put a second chance in my life. I enjoy coming into second chance. I enjoy it. I feel sorry for the people who wake up in the morning and have nothing to do. Do you know that there is a suicide in the United States every 16 minutes? Every 45 seconds, there's an attempt. Most people look at me and say, oh my God, I never realized this was such a problem. In 1986, our son, who was 24 years of age, died of suicide. We felt that you needed a way to deal with that that would be compassionate understanding and that's why I got involved because I had been there and I wanted to help other people understand what they were going through and so my passion to help others my passion to make a difference so that other families didn't go through what we went through was developed into helping others one of those groups was the compassionate friends my husband and I and another couple started a chapter in North Miami of compassionate friends and in that group, there were five families who had all lost children 24 years of age to suicide. As a result, we decided that we needed to have some kind of an organization that dealt with that specific kind of loss. One of the women started a chapter of what now is the FIST, and we all gathered together and helped to get that going, and that's how it all started. People ask me, what makes you do this? my passion to help others and not have others experience this, my absolute unbelievable drive to make a difference in this. And I say it's the three P's that makes it work. I have a passion, I have persistence, and I have patience. You have to engage all of the things that your life experiences has taught you. You have to take all of the things that that passion leads you to and use all of those different talents that you have to make it work. I started out as a Gerber baby at six months. The next step was college, got married young, and um, went back to school for interior design and had a business of my own, Jackie Rose Interiors, for 15 years. From that, I went to fashion design. I went back to school. It doesn't matter whether you're designing for a room or for a body, it's the same. Then I went back full-time into the Florida Initiative, BISP, uh, and here I continue to design. Without a partner, like my husband, who understands and cares, and we've shared everything that we've done. We've been married 50 years. I could not have done this. I could not have spent the time that was devoted to it and I could not do it without his help and without his counsel and all of those other friends and family members who have chipped in to help us make this a success.